Yeah, so I've, I've talked to many other people, and I've said this before, that people being the first in anything is not the easiest because you're you're blazing that trail. You are creating that path for people behind you so that it is easier for them to do it. So the struggles that you are having, you will understand them, but people – behind you will not because you've already gone through that struggle. You've gone through those battles to make it easier for other people and obviously yourself in the future. Of course. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's like, that's the, 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 the biggest thing that I've learned is that selling and convincing other people of what I'm building is, is the most difficult part. And it's, but it's also the most consistent part of the role right. and the job that I'm doing. And it's constantly proving, trying to prove yourself of what you've done has really built, has been this, you know, amazing feat. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I do think that, you know, the, the more you say it and the harder you work, it, it will, it will pay off ultimately. And people will eventually uh, catch on to what you're, what you're saying. I full heartedly agree, and, you know, I'm having the same situation going on with what I'm doing here with this podcast, you know, lumping all of or most of my loves in the world all together in one place that I get to talk to these people that, you know, are out doing things that we all get to enjoy, but we don't really, for the most part, get to hear a lot of their stories and you know, the struggles they went through and what they get to, uh, you know, the reaping their benefits later, you know, the struggles that you're going through at, when you first started, I imagine looking back now, you're like, wow, that wasn't that hard considering I have this or that wasn't that difficult because I now have to deal with this. And so, you know, it's it's little steps along the way that obviously help things become easier for you in the future as well. Right, right. And that's, you know, that's the beauty of perspective is finding what you've done in the past and growing from it and learning from it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, you know, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm fairly young and, and I think back, like, I'm like, what was I thinking or what was I doing? And, and, <laughs> um, but that's this age too. And, you know, when you're younger, you think, and that's when I started, when I started this company, I was 25 and I was like, I'm an idiot. Like, what, what was I thinking? Right. But but that's that's what happens with perspective, and I, I totally agree. Like, okay, if I could have just calmed down, or if I could have just listened to this person, or um, you know, talked to this person, it would have been less of a struggle, or it would have been, you know, I would have figured it out quicker. Um, and so that's also like a stubbornness thing that I have personally. But um. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's it's all about perspective, and you know that's why it's great to listen to people in this industry who have done it before and who have mm -hmm. been, you know, in the space for decades. Because that's that's where you know people, you know, younger people need to know and and, and learn from and kind of respect in a way. I feel that way too. You know, I obviously as I'm getting older, we all are getting older by the second uh, so right of course <laughs> as, yeah age is undefeated you can't you're not going to win <laughs> so but as you get older you do have that reflection you do have that experience and the thought of you know I wish I would have asked older people more about what they went through because you know let's say our grandma all grandparents great grandparents you know, in retrospect, like, they were just explorers because of the fact that, you know, we are so spoiled now as to everything that we have and all the information we have just at our fingertips. Back then, you had to go find a book. You didn't know how updated it was. Gather some of that information. Whether that information actually works for you is a whole nother situation. And then also, you know, going to a grocery store and buying food yeah, it was there, but how good for you is it? Same now, right. obviously, but back then it was like, well, we'll throw this out and they'll probably buy it because it's easier for them as opposed to having to <laughs> make a whole loaf of bread, even though during COVID most people went back and started making bread. 
But, you know, it's just the explorer aspect of it all, and they were just complete savages considering what we have to – how easy it is for us now. I know. I think about that all the time. I even, you know, you, you just talking about the – that other that sangria and I literally just googled it and it popped up and so things like yeah. that that are at my fingertips literally at my fingertips that make right. my life so much simpler than than our 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 elders and I you know my grandfather is an entrepreneur as well and I always ask him I'm like how did you do this stuff and he literally went door to door to get people to use his service and, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't have computers. And then he also had to figure out how to introduce computers and Internet to his business once they did come about. And so it is so much different. Um, and I I think it's having that perspective of talking and, and realizing, okay, you know, I have all these things in my fingertips. I need to take advantage of it and or maybe take a step back and go you know, because I do a lot of door-to-door selling and take a step back and doing the old school way of, of, of working. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's just a very interesting thing to think about and talk about, especially in the context of building a business or building, you know, your own um, portfolio of whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's really no, crappy, you're right. It's, right? Yeah. Well, I want to also go, so you, you're starting this business and you know, uh, in the world of consumerism, when it's on the shelf, obviously the brighter the colors, the better the uh, artwork, it, it'll, it, you need it to jump off the shelf and into people's hands. And so when it came to that, how did you first decide what varietals you're going to have, how many, obviously, SKUs you're going to have, and then also how did you go from there to – okay, what artwork, what are we going to do package-wise? How did all of that kind of come together? Right. Um, It was really a process that wasn't uh, linear. It was kind of like just a whole brainstorming session and picking out different things. So, firstly, the the formulation um, of the actual ingredient or actual product itself. And just for context, we have two flavors, and so we call them skews in the industry. And so two <laughs> skews. Uh, the son of a basil is our strawberry margarita with just a hint of basil. And then the lime, the double of a lime is our classic twist on just the skinny lime margarita. And, you know, we knew that we had to have the lime margarita because that's just a classic. Um, but with the strawberry one, we did a couple surveys. And, I, you know, for anyone who's listening who wants to start something, really important to get customer feedback. And so we actually surveyed, um, you know, thousands of people. Uh, and there's really easy ways to do that now. Uh, thank you, uh, Survey Monkey. Um, and so uh, we saw that strawberry was one of the, the most liked uh flavors that um, pair well with tequila. Um, And so we didn't just pull it, you know, out of thin air. We wanted it to have real data behind it all Uh, because, you know, once we started raising capital, it was uh, it was necessary for us to have that concrete data to prove customers are going to like this, they're going to want it, um, and they're going to buy it. And so that was, like, that part. And then the actual formulation process was really the probably the most fun part of it. Um, you know, we, we hired a food scientist who's very well-versed in space, and she helped us formulate and iterate. And we had many, many people try and taste, and it took us six months to come up with the final formula. Wow. Um, yes, and then the actual – you know, the actual name itself was a brainstorming session. The the brand is the brand. You know, I kind of refer to it as the alternative tequila brand in in the space mm-hmm. because you know we're we're not your male inspired brand. We're not your uh, girl in a bikini at the beach tequila. <laughs> we're not your or we're not your cowgirl or cowboy at the ranch. You know, we're very gritty. We're um, urban and we're the you know, city girl, millennial female, that's bold and tough. Um, and so the damn right is really uh, reminiscent of that. 
And um, the actual branding itself was, again, a brainstorming kind of iteration process of an agency that did it for us. You know, they spent a couple months kind of creating things, and it went from, you know, we had very different uh, branding, but ultimately we – different branding options. And ultimately, we ended up with the um, the Dio de los Muertos skull because mm-hmm. that is very – that resonates with tequila. Um, and this brand is very authentically tequila. It's made from – you know, made into – made in Mexico, and um, – it's really, really authentic in that respect. We we really pride ourselves on working uh, with um, the people down in Mexico and then having a lot of influence in the product. And, you know, so we actually did survey that as well, and it tested, you know, very well. And people saw that, and they said, oh, tequila. Because if, you, if you're on a shelf with 10 other brands, um, what's going to pop out is, honestly, firstly, the color but then the second thing is like the price people that's really pretty much the only thing that matters <laughs> these days is price um but but uh besides that was the color and then if you're going into a store and thinking i want tequila that you know our brand really really resonates with someone who wants tequila it's just an innate thing um and so it was kind of a all-encompassing uh but it, it all-encompassing creating this tequila brand that our customer wanted. And so it was really, really particularly made for the millennial female audience. But that's not to say that we don't have customers that aren't, you know, that are are not millennial females. We have a wide range of people who love our customer or love our product. So, um, but it's important to create that niche, uh, in, especially in the CPG world. Um, but, but yeah, I and mean, it was really, a really, really fun process. And then finally seeing it on the shelf is, is the most exciting part. But yeah, I would say, you know, uh, the product is just kind of the price, um, itself and also how the product looks like was the most important thing. It's true. I remember seeing the switch in the wine world where, you know, wine is this, uh, for the most part, sophisticated uh, beverage that they all had basically the same white labels and they all had roughly the same font on them and all this. And then you started seeing the switch of the labels were changing, the bottle color was changing, the way they presented it was changing a lot because they were also going for the the millennial people, the um, you know the people that were getting off work and needed something to drink and they wanted to fun labels and all this other stuff because that's really made them pop and it made people want to look at it and be like, Oh, what is this? And I love that switch because you do need something to just shake up the industry and to shake up people's thought processes because even if you're going into a liquor, let's say you go into a liquor store on a regular basis, same liquor store, let's say total wine, total wine has to change their end caps, has to change their displays, on a regular basis, otherwise right. they become static. If they're right. static, people just walk right by and like, oh, okay, I've seen this before. It's whatever. Oh, I don't. There might be one extra new skew or new varietal on there, but it's for the most part the same thing, and people will just become blind and numb to it. So when you have that, like what you've done, and it really pops off the shelf and it really p- makes people look and like, oh, what is this? And then obviously the name as well. Because, like you said, you're an alternative brand for people that, you know, yeah, they might like tequila or they might like ready-to-drink stuff, but it's all been your classics like, you know, Jose Cuervo and all the other stuff that people already know. But it's, you know, it's kind of static at this point because they already know it. They already know who they are. They know what they're all about. But they don't know really what damn right's all about, so they got to try it, and they really – like the artwork, and then they, you know, strawberry margaritas are very popular, but with a hint of basil, like, that's something that people haven't had really before. So you're really right. changing things up as well when it comes to the way that these drinks are made. 
I yeah, I mean you're preaching in the choir. I love hearing this. It's, it's, <laughs> that's kind of the uh, whole philosophy behind it. It is really shaking up the the tequila industry because mm-hmm. it has been so male dominated and not.